Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this video, I'll go through the process to configure all the required hardware and software in order for the ProSoft iView mobile application to wirelessly communicate with a ControlLogix controller. ProSoft iView is a mobile application for the iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad that allows for remote monitoring and control of process values within an Ethernet, IP, or Modbus TCP IP network, utilizing a wireless 802.11 and or a cellular network connection. ProSoft iView provides an interface for accessing and monitoring variables and memory of programmable logic controllers plan engineers, PAC, PLC software developers, and maintenance personnel now have the ability for live monitoring and control of PAC, PLC based systems at any time from anywhere. So, to begin, I'll use the ProSoft Wireless and Discovery Client application to configure a Radiolinx 802.11n radio that I will use to connect to an iPhone that I'll be using for this tutorial. Using a CAT5 Ethernet cable, I'll connect my radio and my PC to available ports on the same switch. Or I could simply connect the PC directly to the radio. So in Discovery Client, I'll press the Scan button. And all compatible radios in the vicinity here will come up. So I'll find my radio. Now I can right click on the radio and select Assign IP or just click on the Assign IP button in the menu bar. Now a list of unique IP addresses will be generated. I'll just go with the default IP address and click OK. Now once the IP address is accepted by the radio, you should see that change reflected in the wireless and discovery client scanned radio list. Now I'll double click on the Radio 1 radio and an internet browser window will open and I'm prompted to log in so for the username I'll type in admin and for the password I'll type in password these are the default login credentials so I'm now logged into the radio and on the main configuration page for unit name you'll want to use a descriptive name for this particular radio for the IP address, if you have a DHCP server on your network, you can use that to assign an IP address automatically. Or if you have a specific IP address in mind that you want to use, you can set it to static and enter the IP address, the subnet mask, and the gateway IP address. Now I want this radio set as a master, so for mode I'll just make sure that it's set to be a master. For SSID, uh, I need to make sure that I'm using a unique name that won't conflict with any other wireless networks in the area. So I'll use iPhone underscore training. For channel selection, just make sure that you select a frequency in the 2K megahertz range so that you can connect to it with a mobile device. Unless, of course, you're using an iPad 2, which supports channels up in the 5K range. For security, I'll enter WPA2. And for the security key, I'll enter a passphrase of training. And I'll need to enter this later when I'm trying to connect to the radio. So once all the appropriate changes have been made, I'll click the Apply button. And then, back in Wireless and Discovery Client, I can see the changes reflected in the list. Now, I'll configure the iPhone wireless network with all the appropriate settings for connecting to the radio that I just configured. So first, from my iPhone home screen, I'll tap on the Settings button. And once the Settings page opens, I'll tap on the Wi-Fi settings. And then from the Wi-Fi Networks page, I'll tap on the iPhone Training Network. I'll enter training for the network password. And I'll tap on the Join button. And once I'm connected to the iPhone Training Network, I can see that there's a check mark next to the network name. 
and that should do it. Now I'll create a new RSLogix 5000 project, add some tags to that project, and then download and run the project. Once that is done, I'll configure ProSoft iView to read and write values to the controller. So to begin, I'll launch RSLogix 5000, and when it opens, I'll create a new project. When the new controller window opens, I'll match the settings with the hardware that I've got and verify that the controller matches the new controller type. So once all the information is entered, I'll click OK. And now I'll modify the Ethernet IP settings. In the controller organizer tree, right click on 1756 backplane and choose new module. When the select module window opens, I'll deselect all in the module type category filter and then select communication. And then I'll just browse the module list for my ethernet bridge, which is an EN2T. I'll highlight it and click create. In the module window, I'll just give the module a name, uh, go with the major revision three for the EN2T or four for the ENBT, and then enter the IP address of the ethernet bridge. And once I've entered all that, I'll click OK. OK, so now I'll double click on the controller tags and then click on the edit tags tab. And now I'll create some tags. So first I'll create an SM validation tag with data type integer. The SM validation tag is basically a security code that must be held in the PLC in order for iView to communicate with it. Then I'll create an array called test integer, data type integer, and array of 10. Next I'll do a test real tag, data type real with an array of 10. And then I'll create a few individual tags. Uh, test bool underscore zero, data type bool. And then I'll do another test bool underscore one, data type bool. And then I'll just create three more in this fashion. So now that I have created these tags, I'll go up to tools select export and select tags and logic comments and when the export window opens I'll change the file name to iView tags and when you do this make sure you pay attention to where the file is being saved so that you can find it and I'll click export so with that I'm done with RS Logix for the moment I'll save my project and now I'm ready to move on to the iView configuration. Now I'll use the iView configurator utility to open the CSV configuration file. The application will parse it and provide an interface where I can edit the tags and their properties. This utility also allows me to connect to the mobile device via HTTP and download and upload files. So I'll open ProSoft iView Configurator and I'll go to File, Import PLC Tags and select the CSV file that I just saved from RSLogix 5000. I'll click Open and now I'll create a page for the iView interface. So right click on the No Page tab and select New. Give the page a name and hit enter on the keyboard. Now I'll add the tags from the CSV file that I imported. I'll add five switches to my page by left clicking on the switch tag in the tag selection toolbar. So now I'll select the first tag and look at the bottom of the items properties window. And I'll give the tag a name by clicking on the name field and entering a name. 
Next, I'll click on the variable address field and use the drop down menu to select the test bool underscore zero tag from the CSV file. And this is the process for linking the controls that you place on your page for iView. So now the first switch tag in the iView page is linked to the test bool zero tag from RS Logix 5000. I'll use the same technique to link all the other test bool tags. And once I have those tags linked up, I'll create a new page called test real. And this is where I'll set up the tags for the test real array from RS Logix. Add five sliders from the tag selection toolbar. I'll select the first slider in the list and name it test real one and select the test real zero tag under variable address which will link them and I'll do this for the rest of the tags on the page. And finally I'll create one last page and call it integer. This is where I'll set up the tags for the test integer array. For this I'll add five bezels from the tag selection toolbar. I'll select the first bezel in the list and name it test integer one and then under the items properties window I'll select test integer zero under variable address and as you can see it's just the same process again I'll do this for the rest of the tags on the page and once finished all my tags in iView will be linked up with the corresponding tags in RS Logix. Now I'll enter the IP address of the Ethernet bridge I have in my Control Logics rack in the Properties window here. And then I'll go to File and Save As and name my finished configuration. From the iPhone, I'll launch ProSoft iView. And on the bottom toolbar, I'll tap on the Files button. When the files page opens, I'll click on the on-off toggle switch to place the embedded web server in the on position. Now from my PC, I'll launch the device manager window in iView Configurator by going to File, Device Management, or by pressing Control-D. And in the server address box, I'll type in the URL that I see on my iPhone web server and hit the connect button to connect with the iPhone. Once connected, the configuration files window will populate with any CSV files already on the device. As you can see, I have quite a few already loaded. Once the connection to the iPhone is made, I'll click the upload current button. And now the current configuration that I've just created will be sent to the iPhone's configuration file list. Now I'll download the project and go online with RS Logix 5000 to verify wireless communications to the ProSoft iView. To begin, I'll go back into RS Logix 5000 to my project and using the file menu I'll choose communications and go down to who active. When the who active window opens expand the AB Ethernet IP driver and I'll select my processor and click download in the confirmation window and click download again and once the project is downloaded, I'll choose yes to place the processor into run mode and go online. Once online, I can see solid green for run mode, controller, and I.O. So in the controller organizer tree, I'll open up the controller tags. Click on the show drop down menu. Select configure and verify that all tags are being displayed which is indicated by the check marks in the box. And if you do have to select additional display types, just click OK when you're done. And now that I have my project running in RS Logix, I'll go back to my iPhone and launch ProSoft iView and tap on the Files button. Click on the Sources tab under File Categories. 
And when the sources page loads, I'll select the iView tags CSV file, which I just uploaded, and the gear icon here will show that it's active. And once I have the tags that I want selected, I'll tap the set button, and then I'll tap on the connections button. And once the connection page loads, I'll tap the monitor toggle switch to place it in the on position. And you'll notice that the monitor indicator LED is green now, which shows that I'm connected. So now I'll tap on the home button. And now at the home screen, I can see the three pages that I created in iView Configurator. So I'll open the Boolean page and I'll set some tags to on. And now, back in RS Logix, I should see the corresponding tag set to 1. Now I'll flip to the Test Reel page and adjust the sliders under the Test Reel 0 through Test Reel 4 tags. As I'm doing this, I can see the values in RS Logix are changing accordingly. Now, if I go to the integer page and change values in iView, I'll see the tags are also changing in RS Logix. And uh, if I go into the tags in RS Logix and change a value, I'll see it reflect back in iView. And that is a quick rundown of how to use iView and the iView Configurator Utility to wirelessly communicate with a PAC. If you'd like more information, you can visit our website. And as always, if you have any problems or questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. Happy training!